hugely symbolic day in Jerusalem as the U.S. government officially opens its new embassy there. Donald Trump's son-in-law and senior advisor Jared Kushner will be in attendance at the event, which will also mark Jerusalem Day, a commemoration of the capture of East Jerusalem during the Six-Day War in 1967. Well, the decision by Mr. Trump to move the embassy from Tel Aviv has sparked protest from Palestinians and criticism from the international community who believe that the decision to create a fatal, could create a fatal roadblock in any future efforts to revive the peace process. Well, let's speak now to Israeli writer and former humanitarian officer for the Israeli Defense Force, Hen Mazik. He's in Tel Aviv for us. Good morning to you. Um, the UN has condemned uh, what it's describing as as an excessive use of force against Palestinians at the moment. How would you respond to that? Oh, good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, and congratulations to Netta that won the Eurovision yesterday. It's a big day here, and the following week is going to be very big in Israel. Um, I think that the situation right now is very delicate as uh, Israel is uh, you know, uh, facing uh, Iran and Hezbollah in the north. We're facing 10,000s of protesters in the border with Gaza, where uh, they want to break down the fence and uh, um, uh, sending Molotov, throwing Molotov cocktails, um, burning kites in the air, um, and saying uh, one quote that uh, leader in Hamas said that uh, as soon as they would break the fence, they would break down or take out the hearts of Palestine of Israelis. Um, so uh, Israeli citizens are. Uh, uh, are, are worried, um, um, but with that being said, I think it's a, it's a very important week for us here. Yes, I mean, it does seem as though it will be the, the, the perfect storm uh, on Monday. We've got the Palestinians saying that they will uh, storm uh, the divisive border uh, and will move across. There have been many warnings of much increased violence. We know that one person has already lost their lives in those protests. Yeah, it, it's terrible. I mean, I'm thinking of any other country that will have to face such, a, um, you know, 10,000 protesters that are trying to break through its border, um, throwing Molotov cocktails, trying to get to Israeli civilians and cities on the other side. Um, some statement that we're hearing from Gaza, from uh, the Palestinians that came to the fence, uh, is that they would, uh, they just want to break through to get to Israelis, to get to Israeli civilians. It's an unbearable situation to be in. I think that the IDF is doing, the Israeli Defense Force is doing all it can to uh, to stop them, to uh, uh, to contain the demonstrations that are turning very violent, and it's something that. Uh, uh, we're trying to deal with uh, uh, in the best way, but you know, with the uh, with the leadership of Hamas in Gaza calling for civilians to to kill themselves and and then to uh, to become martyrs, that's something that uh, is always a difficult and challenge. Um, how do you stop it uh, without hurting anyone when people throw in lots of cocktails and bombs over uh, to to defense to the border with Israel? Do you have any sympathy at all for the Palestinians? They're commemorating, particularly on Tuesday, um, them being moved forcibly from their uh, property when the, the state of Israel was created. Do you have any sympathy at all for them? Oh, definitely. I have sympathy. I mean, I'm a son of two refugees. My my dad came to Israel from North Africa. My mom came to Israel from Iraq. Both of them were part of 850,000 Jewish refugees that were expelled from the Middle East and everything was stolen from them. A great, great founder was uh, was killed in Iraq. I mean, there's refugees created all over the world and, and my family is a part of them. Uh, most of Israel is countries of, a country of refugees that were expelled. And I do have sympathy for the Palestinians that, um, that lost their homes because of the war. Um, but with that being said, I mean, I don't think that it's, uh, uh, that uh, there's no other conflict in the world where refugees are passing their refugees in, uh, uh, in generational refugees. So, I mean, uh, there's, a, there's a need to find a solution to the problem of the refugees. And I don't think that the solution would be to destroy Israel or to have one state uh, that is Palestinian with a Jewish minority in it. Uh, my family were a uh, Jewish minority in Iraq and in Tunisia. Um, under Arab Muslim control, uh, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't a great experience, to say the least. In terms of the um, U.S. embassy being moved to uh, Jerusalem, do you think that this really is the, the time for this? This really has been a, a spark and has inflamed the situation and, and perhaps has damaged the, the peace process irrevocably. Well, the peace pro process has been frozen for a while. Um, I think it's a uh, it's a great step. It's uh, correcting uh, historic injustice. Uh, 
Uh, every country in the world has its right to say where its capital is, but it seems that Israel is the only country where we say that Jerusalem is our capital and the world ignores us. Um, so I think it's correcting injustice. And the second thing is that the U.S. has the right to choose where they want to put their embassy. Guatemala has the right to, to follow them and other countries have the right to follow them as well. Um, I think it will give a sign to the Palestinian Authority, the Palestinian leadership, uh, and the Palestinians themselves that time is running out. Um, they have to sit down to negotiation. Direct negotiation is the only path uh, to peace, um, to, to reject uh, the rejectionism of the Palestinians that, that we've been seeing for uh, more than 70 years uh, is something that uh, uh, that must stop, and I think that uh, this would be the the right way to push them to to direct negotiation to to bring peace closer. Hen Mazig, thank you very much for speaking to us this morning. Thanks for having me.